Hello, welcome back again, everybody. PayPal and Patreon are down there if you want to support me. I want to do so if you actually can. So this time we're taking a quick look through at least most of the U.S. shale plays of how long each should last. And by that I mean how long each should be able to maintain current production levels or if they are constantly increasing, as some of them still are, around when they should peak and then start a decline. And for those that are maintaining constant production levels, to go back to that for a second, I mean how long they can maintain that at a plateau before they inevitably begin declining from that. So one way or another, whether you go up to a production peak or you maintain a lower plateau, the peak and the end of the plateau both will usually hit you around the halfway point of depletion for the reserves of the oil field, or in this case the shale play, the Appalachia shale, which is a combination of several shales in the northern Appalachia region, and the Appalachia shale in natural gas production has plateaued out around where I expected it to in the upper 30s, currently plateaued around 35 or 36 billion cubic feet per day, and so to figure out when the plateau end would come about, you just need to do some basic math. So starting with the beginning total, the assumed initial pre-production total of reserves, which was for the entire Appalachia Shale around 370 trillion cubic feet or so. And obviously you look at what's half of that, half of that's about 185. And how close to half are we? Well, so far the Appalachia Shale up to date to the end of this year, 2022, has produced about 90 trillion cubic feet in total. So that's 90 going towards 185 meaning that there's another 95 to go until it hits 185 or the halfway point, producing about 12 trillion cubic feet per year, and 95 divided by 12 is a bit under 8. So, so to give some leniency, we'll then round up to 8. We're about to 2023, so 2023 plus 8 is 2031. So the Appalachia Shale producing at the current plateau of 35 to 36 billion cubic feet per day of natural gas production should be able to stay at that plateau up until between 2030 to 2032, after which it will begin declining. Of course, keep in mind time frames will vary depending on whether I end up being wrong and it ends up being able to go much higher in its production, or it ends up, uh, or they end up reducing production at some point. The Permian Shale. So the Permian shale, as of the end of this year, has gotten up to about 5.5 million barrels per day of oil production, and the suspected starting total is, or was rather, around 50 billion barrels in place, and up to the end, and up to the end of this year, about 12 billion have been pumped out, so that leaves about 13 billion remaining until the halfway point of 25. Now if Permian production were to flatten out right here at 5.5 million barrels per day, that comes out to roughly right around 2 billion barrels per year. So 13 divided by 2 is 6.5. So if it stopped right here and plateaued right here, for example, then 2023 plus 6.5 means that that plateau would last until between 2029 and 2030 before decline started. If it gets up to where I've always suspected its max capacity would be, where it would hit its peak, uh, between 5.9 and 6.2, or basically roughly around 6. Though chances are better that I'll probably be wrong. If it gets up to and stays around 6, that's about 2.2 billion barrels per year, which plateauing at that range would basically just drag it down to 2028 to 2029 then instead. And a maximum production peak would be not that much lower really, as given its prior rates of increase. It would be next year 2.2 billion barrels produced, the year after 2.4, the year after 2.6, so on and so on. And following that up to the halfway point of reserves, it would come out to probably hitting that and then starting a decline between 2026 and 2028. Eagle Ford currently producing around 1.1 million barrels per day. Assumed starting total varies between 12 and 13 billion barrels. In Halfway point of that obviously being about 6 to 6.5. Produced up until this year so far has been between 5 and 5.5 billion barrels. 
thus leaving we'll assume a larger gap, 1.5 left to go until the halfway point, and at 1.1 million barrels per day, that is a production rate of about 0.4 billion barrels per year, so 1.5 divided by 0.4 is a bit under 4 years remaining, so maintaining the current production levels, which it seems like Eagle Ford is roughly doing, then it should hit the end of its ability to do that around 2026 or so. Up in North Dakota, the Bakken Shale is a bit more variable, there's a bit less consistency with some of the estimations, but in terms of its current production, it's at about 1.2 million barrels per day. Estimated initial total when things began is between 7.6 or as high as 10.5 billion barrels, and production up to this point, the end of this year, has amounted to 3.5, and so you're looking at a halfway point being at either 3.8 or as high as 5.2, so the remainder of the way to the halfway point being either 0.3 or 1.7, and current production, which it looks like Bakken is roughly staying around, at least relatively, although again that might change, is about 0.43 billion barrels per year, so the math with those numbers equates to either it reaching the end of its capability to do that at the end of next year, or basically in 2024 we'll say, or it being able to maintain that up until about 2027, so it should be able to last to sometime between 2024 and 2027. The Haynesville Shale, which occupies the tri-state border region shared by Texas, Louisiana, and Arkansas, and when I talk about my various energy and resource calls and stuff about how I'm 5 for 1, the one that I got wrong that I'm referring to in that ratio is that I did not think Haynesville would be able to have a maximum capacity of production above 13 billion cubic feet per day, which it turned out I was wrong as they've been able to actually push it up to 16. Whether it will flatten out here or keep going, I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. For total starting reserves, suspect is around 250 trillion cubic feet in place. Produced up to this point is about 40, the halfway point obviously being about 125, the remaining distance to the halfway point being another 85 trillion cubic feet to produce. So. If it leveled off at present at about 5.2 trillion cubic feet produced per year, 85 divided by 5.2 is about 16, and so 2023 plus 16 ends you up with a expected end of plateau range between 2039 and 2040, but we'll widen that just for safety and say 2038 to 2040. However, if production keeps increasing, if the maximum capacity is way beyond what I thought it was, and they're able to keep increasing production at the current rate, thus they're going up next year to 6 trillion cubic feet produced, and then 6.8 the year after, then to 7.6, and so on. Then from that, on that path, you'd end up hitting a peak around 2032 or so. So actually, even in that regard, Haynesville will probably end up being the longest lasting out of the U.S. shale plays. And again, keep in mind, to avoid anybody having a misunderstanding, these are not dates at which this production will suddenly drop off the face of the earth. This, these are the dates at which production will either peak or the end of a plateau will be reached, from which the production will begin decreasing, not suddenly vanishing. But anyways, that's it for this one then, so thank you everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, obviously, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, there's plenty of other episodes about all kinds of stuff you can listen to if you want. You can support me through PayPal or Patreon, only do so if you actually can. Also go subscribe to my Catch channel, but no matter what happens to me, may God bless and protect all of you, and I will see you all around next time.